I'm Dan Cassens, professor of wood products at Purdue University located in West Lafayette, Indiana. I will take the next couple of minutes uh, to describe the fine hardwood face veneer industry to you as well as the resource that it relies upon. After we finish with that, we'll take a trip to Edinburgh, Indiana, and we will meet with Greg Hertog of Danzer Veneer Americas, and he will discuss with us the good and bad characteristics of veneer quality logs and the impact that those characteristics have on the final sliced veneer. The flat sliced hardwood veneer industry is probably the most fascinating of any of the wood manufacturing industries that we have. It's centered right here in Indiana. Half or quartered logs often weighing a ton or more are clamped to a machine and the bed of that machine moves up or down against a knife producing uh, 60 to 90 sheets of veneer per minute. Uh, these sheets of veneer are usually about 136 to 150 of an inch in thickness. The result is hundreds of sheets of veneer from a single log. Uh, this process greatly expands the amount of area that can be covered with a valuable wood species as compared to solid lumber. In addition to traditional wall and furniture panels, uh, veneer can be used to wrap various fiber-based profiles and even wrap metal profiles and produce uh, raised panel doors rather than using uh, solid lumber. The uh, hardwood veneer industry uh, developed in Indiana uh, during the early 1900s and uh, it remains uh, very dominant in the state uh, to this day. The reason for it developing here was the presence of high quality white oak and walnut timber and an abundance of that timber both here in Indiana and in adjacent states. Cherry and hard maple are two more important veneer species. The best quality cherry veneer timber comes from Pennsylvania and parts of New York. The best quality hard maple timber comes from the Lake States and New England. It's important that landowners and land managers recognize what veneer quality timber is, that they try to produce that timber uh, to replace that that we're using, and more importantly, they get that quality timber directed into the proper market, that's into the veneer uh, log market. The uh, trees that produce veneer quality logs are healthy, vigorous trees that are growing on highly productive timber sites. These sites need to be well drained and uh, then we have an opportunity to produce some really quality timber. Uh, if the site has been grazed by cattle or it's been uh, exposed to fire over the years, that will greatly diminish the potential value of any uh, veneer quality timber coming off of it. Regardless of species, there are certain characteristics that are, that are just not acceptable in veneer quality trees and logs. These include things like overgrown limb and branch stubs, uh, seams, cracks, checks, anything like that uh, removes that tree from being considered as veneer. Things like bird peck, mineral stain, fungal stain, uh, insect damage also uh, reduce the value of any log or tree as far as veneer quality is concerned. A little bit might be acceptable. Uh, sometimes people can work around some of these defects, but by and large those are things that veneer log buyers don't want to see uh, to begin with. The tree should also be or log should also be perfectly straight and round and the pith should be centered uh, exactly in the center of the cross section. The rate at which these trees grow is also very important to the veneer industry. They prefer to have about six to nine rings per inch of growth. Uh, what they do not like is trees that grow slow for a while and then grow fast or conversely trees that grow fast and then all of a sudden slow down in growth rate. That produces a double textured uh, figure in the veneer and it's not very desirable at all. Hello, my name is Greg Hartog. I work for Danzer Veneer Americas. I'm the procurement manager here and today we're going to be talking about veneer quality as it relates to log quality and what we look for in logs to try and make the best veneer that we can. Our first example is walnut here and we have three samples from one flitch, which is one half of a log. For ideal walnut, we want to see centered hearts and, and, and a good structure uh, and, and a nice cathedral look to, to the grain pattern. Color is also important. Um, the term mousy gray goes a lot with walnut and this, this log has that look. 
Um, there will be variations in colors, but this would be also the ideal color that we'd want to achieve. One of the problems we have with walnut is worm. Uh, in certain regions of the country, it's more prominent, and we have to be very cautious about the logs we buy. Uh, we can usually identify it in the log fairly well, but sometimes it gets into the veneer and we can't, when we can't identify it in the log. Here is the worm itself, and you have the whole length here is the track from the discoloration. And when you see one or two worms showing up in the end of a log, typically you're going to see a lot more track in the, in the veneer. It's a really bad issue we have, but we try and limit those logs coming into our production. One of the best indicators that worm will be in walnut is the bird peck you see on the outside in the bark. You'll see holes, and sometimes the hole will even have a scabbed over effect. But when it's strong in the, in the bark, there's a very, very good chance you're going to see worm in the veneer. Another issue we have with walnut are pin knots. Here is an example of what we call cluster pin knots, uh, which is uh, a little more protruding than, than a single pin knot, uh, but still a problem. Here we have various sizes of pin knots, kind of a medium size here and here, and then on top we have a much smaller pin knot. But any pin knot you have will impact the quality of veneer that you produce. Here at Danzer, we produce a lot of white oak. Uh, here are two examples of pretty good logs. Uh, the first sample would be ideal color, structure, lack of defects. There are some species of white oak that are darker than the true white oak, and we do have markets for, uh, for the darker veneer. One of the problems we have with both white oak and red oak is grub. Um, we have certainly the holes that can occur, and then we also have the streaking that occurs because of the grubs. We see some grub stain going into red oak, and if you look to the outside, you can actually track where the grub has worked into the log. This is one of our white oak logs. This particular log has really good structure and really good color. The only problem we see is that it has a mineral streak that runs par partially around the log. So that will be end up in some lower grade veneer, at least in part of the log. Here we have a white oak log with a very large, significant pin knot. This pin knot will actually show up in the veneer very early and run all the way into the heart of the log. In the spring, when sap starts running in trees, we often will see tension develop and end splitting as a result. Here is a white oak log, best case or worst case example of what that might look like. This also happens with walnut and hickory and some cherry, less in maple though. But we'll take a yield loss on this by having to clip the veneer back to where the end split does not occur. Here is white oak that has a whole array of defects that we hopefully don't see very often. Uh, in this first sheet, we see a streak of mineral that goes up the, almost the entire length of the flitch. In the second example here, we have a lot of pin knots and also some mineral, even some bird peck. Now you'll notice that the sap is deteriorated here. That's not a large concern because we'll clip that off anyway when we sell the veneer. Uh, it may hurt our yield a little bit if it were versus clean sap, but it's still not really a defect for us. Cherry is a species we also produce here. Um, color is very important today in, in the market that we have. Um, there is very little demand for cherry, so everything has to be just right. Uh, this would be the ideal color that we would try and shoot for. Problems we have is gum, uh, the black streaks that are prominent, and what we identify as teardrop, which are the longer black streaks that we see in the veneer. Both are severe defects that uh, give us a low end product. Another problem we have with cherry is pin knots. Uh, they're typically more in second cut tr logs, but they can be very prominent. And that's a defect that would only probably allow us to sell it as a furniture grade and not a panel grade. So we won't get nearly as much money for this as if it were clean.
This is an example of hard maple veneer. It has really good structure. Uh, it's fairly clean, has a little bit of sugar showing. It's nice and, and wide. So this would have a lot of value in our veneer markets. A relatively small problem we have with, with maple is the heart size. Uh, typically we buy logs that only have one third heart in the log. So uh, once we get to the very back of the log, does the heart appear? Like walnut and cherry, maple also has pin knots, which can be a problem for us. Also in maple, we see that sugar can be a real problem. It's just heavy f flex. And then with this particular sample of veneer, there is also mineral. You see the darker streaks, which is also a problem for us as well. Here we have a clip from a butt log of a maple log that originated from the Midwest. And as you can see, it has heavy amounts of mineral and even some sugar. That's why we don't produce very much maple from the Midwest. The most significant problem with maple is buckle. And that's where the veneer is not flat. Uh, and we can identify in some cases in the logs, uh, but when it's produced, uh, it just won't lay flat like our, our normal veneer should. As compared to lumber manufacturing, the production of veneer is a costly process. Production of low quality veneer because of low grade logs may cause an economic loss to the manufacturer. Thus buyers try to select only those logs which will produce a desirable product. Markets for veneer are constantly changing. When a particular species is in high demand, a buyer may need to accept some logs that are just less than desirable. There is also specialization within the industry. One producer may be noted for their walnut and another for exceptional hard maple. It's a fascinating industry and it is based as much on experience and art as it is in science and machinery.